FSH uh, stands for follicle stimulating hormone. It is one of the so-called gonadotropins, which is released by the pituitary, and as the name says, stimulates the growth of follicles. That's its physiological function, but in reproductive medicine, it has been our main diagnostic tool for many decades in assessing how well ovaries are still functioning in a woman. Practically every gynecologist, even if not specializing uh, in, in fertility, uh, uses FSH to, to get at least a first impression of where a woman stands in terms of her reproductive capacity. standard answer that you will get in most textbooks uh, and from most colleagues is that an FSH up to 10 milli international units per ml is considered normal. Some people even say up to 12. We don't believe that. FSH increases as women get older. And therefore, to assume that what represents a normal FSH level uh, for young women, let's say for a 21-year-old, uh, is the same as what represents a normal FSH level for a 43-year-old, simply does not make sense. Yet, that is how uh, medicine and our specialty has been proceeding for the last 30 years. And we therefore, a few years ago, established what we called age-specific FSH levels. And we therefore, today in our practice, use those to determine whether a woman has normal ovarian reserve or not. What represents a maximum FSH level is relative, depending on the age and other surrounding factors. But I can say that uh, once an FSH of 30 is reached, and definitely once an FSH level of 40 is reached, uh, it, for all practical purposes, uh, becomes very difficult, if not impossible, even for young patients to conceive. The younger the patient, the better our chances will be to still achieve pregnancy with use of a woman's own eggs, even if her FSH is high. The FSH is not the disease. FSH is the symptom. Uh, it is a reflection of what the ovary does. So we really don't look at the given FSH level at a particular moment. We look much more comprehensively at what the ovarian reserve of that patient looks. If you wait until FSH comes down, uh, you may be waiting through the last few months of a patient's opportunity uh, to conceive. We, we really do not believe in waiting. Uh, we believe in waiting uh, while medications that we give beneficially impact the ovaries, such as DHEA. Uh, but as soon as we can get going, we like to get going. Many of our colleagues believe that diminished ovarian reserve is untreatable. Uh, our center really does not believe that and hasn't believed in that for a good number of years, uh, principally based uh, on our experience with DHEA. Through our DHEA experience, uh, we have come uh, to a new understanding of ovarian aging. Uh, one of the interesting observations that we have made in our DHEA-treated patients with very, very 
severely diminished ovarian reserve is not only that we're getting a surprising number of pregnancies, but once these women get pregnant, our miscarriage rates are surprisingly low. Approximately one third of women who come to us because they were told that uh, their only chance of pregnancy is through donor eggs, uh, leave us pregnant with the use of their own eggs. Uh, so a, a, a minority, but still a quite significant uh, portion of patients uh, with very, very poor uh, ovarian reserve and usually quite high FSH with appropriate treatment at CHR will still have a very decent uh, pregnancy chance. Is a diagnosis. It basically means that that woman is prematurely aging her ovaries. It is very frequently not recognized that uh, young women uh, have lower FSH levels than older women and that therefore the cutoff of what is abnormal in them has to be set lower. Uh, we call that age-specific uh, ovarian function testing or age-specific FSH uh, in this context. Uh, and that is a crucially important concept if one wants to make the diagnosis of premature ovarian aging. Many younger women uh, circulate for years amongst fertility centers with a diagnosis of so-called unexplained infertility because nobody has looked at their FSH or AMH values in an age-specific way. And once they are recognized to suffer from premature ovarian aging, then the whole treatment paradigm changes. Then you stimulate them differently, then you approach them differently, and suddenly those women who for years didn't understand why they didn't conceive, suddenly they get pregnant.